most well-known theory to the path of expertise or how to learn anything fast is called 10,000-hour rule. It was initially introduced in the book Outlier. This theory made the author Malcolm Gladwell famous, however, later on, for the same reason, destroy his reputations. For the people who don't know, 10,000 hour rule basically means if you put 10,000 hours of practice into any field, you 100% will be world top notch expert in the field. And the answer seems to be, it's an extraordinary consistent answer in an incredible number of fields, and that is you need to have practiced to have apprenticed for 10,000 hours before you get good. So every great- He's supporting the theory with an interview with Bill Gates and a look into the research paper and quoting a series of them as a scientific evidence. But soon enough, it will backfire on him. The series of scientific research paper he quoted is actually from researcher Andreas Erickson. Even the 10,000 arm rule, the 10,000, this number, was quoted in one of his research papers in 1993 called The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Experts' Performance. If you ever read through this 44-page lengthy research paper, you will realize the researcher's intention are completely opposite than what Michael Gladwell suggests, that just put 10,000 hours in, you'll be fine. And the final drama happened in 2015, when Ericsson published his new book, Peak, Secret from the New Science of Expertise. In one of the chapters, the subtitle is directly talk about 10,000 hour rule. He pointed out the false logic of Macon Gladwell. And he also suggests that if you blindly follow the 10,000 hour rule, you 100% will stuck in mediocre. For example, you see so many people probably speak 10,000 hours. How many of them are expert of speaking? So many people drove a couple of thousand hours. How many great drivers you see on the road? If you work with a coach, you probably will improve your backhand volley in two hours, much more than you would do in years of just playing uh, uh, tennis. The same thing is kind of true. In the research paper, he tried to figure out one problem. Is in one of the most prestige music school, what make the top-notch music student different than world-class music students? The final conclusion is how much our deliberate practice they put in directly decide how great their music abilities are. And also the author emphasized the key here is not ours, it's deliberate practice. So, in an easy way to understand what did Michael Gladwell get it wrong, it's basically talking about what makes a world champion bodybuilder different than local champion bodybuilder. They talk about hours, that's significant difference. But Michael Gladwell literally just ignore the importance of diets, schedule, training, hard work, technique, and have the conclusion, hours is all you need. But in reality, the reason why those music students can get into such prestige music school to begin with is because they have a great technique to practice. So how can we learn from deliberate practice or learn anything fast and effective and don't waste our effort to nothing? The author suggests there is four different stages of practice. Using an example to demonstrate this, Imagine you recently really want to pick up the sports playing tennis. In the beginning, you have a couple of lessons, you play with your friends, and you improve very fast. And at this stage, hours is all you need. You probably you play 200 hours. But until one point, you will hate a plateau. Regardless how much more tennis you play with your friend, you wouldn't improve much. And here is our first stage is mindless practice. If you want to improve after this, this, you need to hop on the second stage called purposeful practice. What is purposeful practice? In the book, it shows an example of Franklin, the father of America. He have a passion of playing chess. He spent well over a couple thousand hours on playing chess. Sometimes he will play chess overnight with his friend. 
when people revisit Franklin's chess match, they realize that he is nothing but a beginner level. So what went wrong there? If you look at his other expertise, you will immediately tell what did he do wrong on the practice of chess. He is a master of writing. In one of, of autobiography of Franklin, he record that because he really want to improve his writing skill. What did he did is he find one of the most prestige magazine back then. He will memorize the article. Uh, what's the main of it? So after two three week, when he forget about the detail of it, he will rewrite those meaning in his own word. After he will compare what's different words they use, what's the different grammar they use, how did they write to captivate people's attentions, and this purposeful is what he need. He have a no access to play with a master chess player in Europe or have a, some record of other higher level chess players game so he can review his own game. All he do is play with people around his level. Even then, this is a very powerful tool. You eventually will hate another plateau soon enough. That is a signal that your practice need to be the third level already. You need to constant update your coaching, learning, practice, knowledge within the field. One of the most potent evidence for importance of update learning knowledge within the field is one set of data from running. About 1900, the marathon record, the world record, is about three hour 20 minutes. But if you move your point of view back to nowadays, if you run three hour 20 minute for the marathon, if you are a guy between 18 to 34, you barely even can compete in Boston Marathon. You may be disqualified if you cannot run under this time. So what happened during this 100 years? Is it because human evolution and make us have a longer leg? The answer is constant improvement of training technique. And some field is more fortunate than other field. For example, like music or mathematicians or running, they have a clear feedback. We can clearly judge who is better. So from those elite, we can conclude what is make their master performance possible. And the people being developed training technique for hundreds of years, thousands of years. If for a best violin player to practice certain technique and you tell them you never learn this from a teacher, you have to come up this kind of technique on your own, is almost impossible. Even among drawing, this kind of learning technique or practice drawing technique is constantly improving. Like for example, Picasso, he basically mastered all the drawing technique and learn about all different sort of style of painting. And when you only know the rule, then you can break the rule. And then the fourth level, when you have this update of learning technique, we come to the highest level of practice, which is ours. When the research paper Enters published in 1993. It demonstrates after you done the first three layer, then our become most important data. There's not such a thing called young prodigies. All of those, the best of the best music students, no one practice less and reach the highest level. All of them practice about 7,500 hours before age of 18. So for most people uh, who read tens of the hour rule, you just bluntly put in hour, like what Franklin does, just go practice, 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 uh, play the chess, play the chess. You 100% will stock in mediocre. That's basically what I suggest. So in conclusion of what should we do in order to practice effectively, to learn anything fast in any field literally, is to follow the deliberate practice. It's, it's very understandable for our languages. For example, if you want to become a bodybuilder, you need to watch out your diet, you need to watch out your schedule, your sleep, and your technique when you exercise. But when we transfer to other fields, suddenly we 
become a blind to how can we become better. And the deliberate practice offer a step-by-step -step way to reach the expertise. And for people who are interested in more practice, more efficiently, I suggest you read the book, Peak. And that will be all for today's video. My name is Paul. I will see you next time. Bye.